Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Nick. This week I made a mitered spline jig that doubles as a tenoning jig. Let me show you how I made it. I started by cutting all my pieces to final width. My wood of choice for this was 3 quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. You can use just about any type of wood or plywood that you have available. I just prefer Baltic birch not only because it looks nice, but there's very few voids and it's a rather stable wood to use. Using my table saw sled, I could make sure to cut one end nice and square. Then I could cut the first piece to length. Tilting my table saw blade to 45 degrees, I could then start in on my second piece. It had a 90 degree on one end and a 45 degree bevel on the other. The remaining piece, or the hypotenuse of the triangle, had a 45 degree bevel on each end. I left this piece a little bit long so it could be trimmed to length later. Then with my base piece and upright piece, I could mark out some locations for some holes to be drilled. If you want all the exact dimensions, I'll have a free measured drawing available in the build article and I'll put that link down below. These holes were going to be connected to be used as adjustment slots. There's a couple different ways you can do this. You can use a jigsaw, but I was going to be using quarter 20 carriage bolts where the shoulder is quarter inch square. So I wanted a more precise fit. So I ended up using a quarter inch straight bit in my router. In my opinion, it gives an overall better finish. If the slots are at all uneven or just to clean them up, you can use some sandpaper double sided taped to a piece of scrap wood to clean everything up. I enlarged one end of each of the slots with a larger hole to allow for that carriage bolt head to slide through. That way you wouldn't have to unscrew these every time you wanted to insert them into the jig. If you know you're going to be doing this beforehand, use your larger bit to just touch the surface to kind of indicate where it's going to be. Then drill your through hole and then use the router to connect the holes. Then come back with the larger bit and now you'll know exactly where to drill it. It should look like a keyhole shape when you're done. It's critical that this triangle is a right triangle or it's 90 degrees at one angle. Knowing my table saw wing is machined to exactly 90 degrees, I clamped one of the pieces to the edge of the table saw and made sure it was flush with the top. I could then glue and screw the second piece to it, ensuring that I had a 90 degree joint. Make sure when you include these outer screws that you keep them away from the slots we created earlier and that they don't poke through. Double checking to make sure I had a nice square joint, I could then install the last piece. I opted to use CA glue and wood glue. That way the CA glue would set up almost immediately and I wouldn't have to use clamps and risk having too much pressure causing the triangle to go out of square. If you get squeeze out on the inside of the triangle and you're as picky as I am, a drinking straw cut at an angle can clean up some of that squeeze out. Here you can see that one piece being left a little bit long. With the blade on the table saw tilted to 45 degrees, it could be cut flush with the other piece. For the tenoning jig portion to have a hold down, I was going to use a toggle clamp. For that, I had a small piece of wood that I drilled four holes to attach the toggle clamp. I counterbored those holes to make sure that the hardware sat below the surface and then two additional holes to line up with the adjustment slots on the jig. I ended up rounding the corners over as well. Then just with a couple washers and some lock nuts, attach the toggle clamp to the piece of wood. The two corners of the triangle that didn't have screws in them, I opted to go with splines to reinforce the joint. So I just planed down some walnut to an eighth inch thick, used my spline jig to cut out a few kerfs, and then I could glue and insert the splines. A flush cut saw and a random orbit sander took care of the rest. It's pretty fancy for a shop jig, so if you don't want to go with that route, you can always just countersink and screw in a few screws. The jig was going to sit on my crosscut sled, but for the tenoning portion, I wanted a larger fence to reference against. So I took some quarter inch MDF, cut it into small strips, and glued those into place. You can see here it basically extends the fence to support the workpiece when you're cutting tenons. One coat of wipe-on polyurethane just to kind of keep some of the grease and grime off of it, and I was ready to test it out. 
It attaches to the table saw sled with quarter 20 hardware and star knobs. There's a spot on there to bolt it down in two spots, but I've noticed once it's resting against the fence, holding it down with the outermost one is just fine. Then using a six inch ruler, I can set the jig the exact distance from the blade that I need to make my shoulder cuts. Setting the blade height appropriately, I can then make each of the four shoulder cuts. Then I can install the toggle clamp hold down and tighten that in place. Readjust my blade height and the distance of the jig to the blade and make my cheek cuts. Making several quick cuts, you can finish up the edge of the tenon. Not too bad for about 30 seconds worth of setup. The second function to this jig is to add splines to miter joints. I switched over to a flat top saw blade because the joint was going to be visible and taking a test piece with 45 degree bevels on each end, I can clamp the piece in place and make a couple test cuts. I contemplated putting a couple slots on the slope of the jig to accommodate that toggle clamp, but most of the mitered splines I'm going to be doing are rather wide and a toggle clamp wouldn't fit in there. But by all means, if you build this, feel free to add a couple adjustment slots and the toggle clamp can act as a hold down on the slope surface as well. Using that same 1 8 inch walnut spline material I had from before, I dry fit the test joint. I added some glue on the spline and the end grain and let it dry. A flush cut saw to cut off the excess, sanded it smooth, not too shabby. If you guys are interested in building this jig, I'll have a free measured drawing available in the build article, and I'll put that link in the description below. It's designed to go on my table saw sled, I'll put a link for that down below as well, but I think you could modify it if you wanted it to be a standalone thing. It's just that I wanted to do a few add-on things in the future to the sled, and this is one of the many things. I like that it does two functions. It does the mitered splines and then also acts as a tenoning jig. So you get a little bit more bang for your buck out of, you know, the jig that you just made. Anyways, I'm pretty happy on how it turned out. If you guys are new here, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button as well to go over to nickferry.com and sign up for my email newsletter. I'm releasing all sorts of stuff over there periodically. And here's a few more videos that you guys might be interested in. Well, until I see you guys next time, you guys, take care.